way to um, alleviate some of their suffering uh, represents a, a fantastic opportunity for me and something that I'm very grateful for. So, uh, you're really a test case for me. Uh, I decided two years ago that the international community had failed the poor of what I call the forgotten world and that whatever time was left to me, I had to spend trying to convince uh, young people <coughs> that uh, they had to do what we couldn't do, and that is convince the international community, the governments of the world, poor and, and rich, and the major organizations such as the UN, EU, etc., to honor their obligations to the poor, because that didn't happen during uh, my time involved in uh, running uh, a humanitarian organization. And that doesn't in any way take away from the phenomenal, prodigious efforts of so many people, whether they were missionaries, teachers, engineers, accountants, doctors, you name it, uh, so many. Uh, but we were like a canoe to the Titanic, all of us put together, and we buried more people than we saved. So that's not good enough, since every human being's life is precious. So if the situation for the poorest of the poor, wherever they may be, is to change, it has to be the next generation and generations after that that are going to uh, do something on a grand scale. And that's why I'm so enthused by social entrepreneurs, because they think outside the box in a big way. It's amazing to think that today, the person on this planet who's most identified uh, with the fight against abject poverty and ensuring that human rights are uh, the preserve of everybody is a 16-year-old girl, Malala, who nobody had heard of a year ago. But because of one act that she did by taking on the uh, government of Pakistan and perhaps the Taliban or whoever over education and got a bullet in the head for her trouble, She's now become the person that my colleagues in the media will ring up and say, what do you think, Malala, of what's happening in Nigeria, or what's happening in Bangladesh, or wherever? It's, that's amazing. We didn't think that might happen. We kept waiting, if you like, our Messiah was going to be the president of the United States, or the president of Russia, the president of somebody, or the head man of the World Bank, or the UN. But there was none of them. I came back from uh, the famine of Ethiopia in 19... Early in 1984, the worst famine we had ever encountered. And I'd been in Cambodia with Paul Pot when he exterminated a million people. I was one of the first Westerns in there. We borrowed an airplane, and even though we didn't know whether we could get in or not, we, we went down. And uh, Ethiopian famine was probably six times worse than that genocide. Six million people were starving to death. And I was finding it when I got back very difficult to get publicity for it. This was before Michael Burke did his famous film in Coram Camp on the BBC and before Bob Geldof did Band-Aid. But nobody was prepared to believe me really because what I was talking about was too horrific to con contemplate. Six million people all starving simultaneously. But this little fellow, I was in a um, school in Skerries, North County, Dublin. And this little fellow put up his hand, he said, Mr O'Shea, my father is a fisherman, and he's got a boat, and he'd go to Utopia, couldn't remember the name Ethiopia, and he'd collect the hungry babies, and he'd bring them back to Skerries and fatten them up. And then, when there's food in Utopia, we'll bring the babies back, and we'll all live happily ever after. And there's lots of boats in Skerries, and the lads' daddies will go out to Utopia. Now, I had an offer of about 20 boats that day, and it made more sense than anything. The World Bank, the Monetary Fund, the, all the countries of the world were doing nothing from a government level to help the starving people of Ethiopia. But this little boy had more in here, and if you like, in here, because we do that, wouldn't we? If, if out in the Sundarbans or something today, everybody was drowning, we were told if we get the boats out, we can get, we'd all do that, because we're all human beings, but the world wasn't human. Rank and file people did contribute money and so forth. Well, we buried many more people than we saved in Ethiopia. As, I mean, we, the aid community. So 
they were uh, examples, if you like, of people who you wouldn't expect them to be social entrepreneurs, but by God, were they? Then we, we think of the ones in history that have left their mark uh, in, that, uh, in that area. Obviously, the most important would perhaps be Nelson Mandela, but Mahatma Gandhi and uh, Martin Luther King weren't far behind. And again, there were only three individuals, all went to jail, two of them were shot for their beliefs, if you like. But what a phenomenal contribution, contribution they made. And none of them need have done that. They could have lived a nice, quiet life somewhere. But they, they felt uh, compelled to do that. Because somebody they felt had to do it. And we can't be waiting for governments. Governments don't appear to have as much interest in helping the poorest, the marginalised, as they should. Ideally, if a government looked after its own in every country, there'd be no problems. But, sadly, that isn't the case. And even in the West, we have problems in Ireland. We're a very well-developed nation, but yet we can't even provide houses for our poor. I, I don't understand it, but there's bureaucracy, there's corruption, there's everything in so many governments. But social entrepreneurs say the hell with that. We're going to find a way through. We're going to get the job done. If we have to kick down the door or kick somebody with it, so what? because the child's life is at stake. We have to operate, if you like, like a fire brigade. Fire brigade, when it comes in, doesn't check to see who owns the building or who's important or who's rich or who's... They just see where the greatest need is, and they take the person out. It's the youth, the young people of the generation are going to have to think a little straighter than the adults have in my time. And I believe that... Given the history of the international community's efforts to alleviate suffering, whether it's uh, to, to uh, turn up a, a tragedy, a major humanitarian tragedy such as an earthquake or a famine or a drought or whatever, or to do something about the long-term needs of people, uh, people affected by AIDS, by Ebola, by a whole range of diseases, by abject poverty, by an absence of human rights, the governments and the institutions are not doing what they should doing, and there isn't the mechanism. At least in Western society, we do have things like fire brigades. Might be good, they might be bad, but they are there. The world has no fire brigade. The poor have no fire brigade. There isn't the type of love and concern that that little boy in Scaries had for his fellow human being, what Malala has, what the missionaries had and have, and others who work with the poor of the poor. That's absent. And if you don't care about somebody, the chances are you're not going to do uh, an awful lot about it. I'm very confident that among you are people who are already, I'm sure, doing such pro prodigious work for their fellow human being that it would be embarrassing for me even to, to query that. But I have great confidence in... Uh, in the Calcutta people, they're, they're, they're an extraordinary bunch of people. Like what they have endured over the years and the way they're still smiling, uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's, such a, it's such a pleasure to come here. But then on the other hand, when I see so many of them still struggling, uh, you know, I'm, I, I wonder, is there anything more I can do? And I think the, the best I can do uh, is to try and um, encourage you guys uh, with your greater, grain uh, greater uh, brain power and perhaps more important of all a greater number of, of real ideas that's going to uh, perhaps uh, make life bearable for, for, for many, 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 many people. So again, a thousand thanks for uh, your attention. Thank you.